Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Before we get into today's lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Um, let us know you're out there. If you have any questions or comments or prayer requests, drop them below. I'd love to be standing with you in prayer. Um, the last couple weeks, we've been talking a lot about Jesus and um, the crucifixion and his resurrection. Last week, we talked about his ascension. He went back to heaven and we got to learn about the conversion of Paul one of the most famous Bible characters that we hear a lot about and who wrote us a lot of letters about what it means to follow Christ. Um, and today we're going to learn a little bit more about his story, and then we're going to talk about some of the lessons he shared with us. Let's get to it. Paul didn't believe in Jesus at first. Then he saw Jesus in the middle of a road, and when Jesus talked to him, Paul believed. Then he couldn't stop talking about Jesus everywhere he went. He traveled with his friend Silas. In a town that they visited, Paul and Silas healed a girl who had been consumed by a spirit that told the future. She had been a slave, and when her owners realized they couldn't make money off of her anymore, they complained to the judges, who ordered Paul and Silas to be stripped and whipped without mercy. Paul and Silas were thrown in prison. The jailer was ordered to guard them carefully. He put them deep inside the prison and fastened their feet so they couldn't get away. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaking. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights when he rushed in shaking with fear. He fell down in front of Paul and Silas. He asked them, What must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and your family will be saved. They told the jailer about Jesus. Paul and Silas told everyone in the jailer's house about Jesus. It was the middle of the night, but the jailer washed the wounds of Paul and Silas, then he and his whole family were baptized because they believed in Jesus. Early in the morning, the judges sent their officers to the jailer. They ordered him to let Paul and Silas go. Paul and his helpers traveled to a lot of other places. Paul's teachings helped new Christians understand the things Jesus wanted them to do. Paul also wrote letters to the church. His words were full of encouragement and teaching to help the people be strong in their beliefs. We still have many of his letters today in the Bible, and we can read them for ourselves. All right, isn't that a neat story? I know it doesn't cover a lot of time. It kind of happens within a night, but there is a lot we can learn from it. And I want to teach you guys, I want to point out a couple things that are worth mentioning. First of all, Paul and Silas trusted God. They set a wonderful example for us. We say we want to be saved. We say we believe that Jesus is our savior. But what does that look like? Well, in Paul and Silas's case, they were in prison. They didn't know how it was going to turn out. They didn't know that God was going to just knock the doors over and let them out. But they still worshiped God. They praised him and they sang hymns and prayed to him and thanked him for his faithfulness. Thanked him for his love, even when they were literally in prison. And what a great example that is. So we can follow Paul and Silas' example and praise him and worship him. Another thing I want to teach you is that, um, you know, the guard, when the guard saw what happened, he was terrified. He thought he was going to get so busted, but Paul and Silas were there and they said, don't harm yourself. Um, and we're still here. We didn't run off. And that opened the guard's eyes. He was able to see, hey, they're followers of of the one true God. He wanted to be saved too. So we can set an example of faith. When we are fa faithful and when we are filled with hope despite our circumstances, that is a great witness to the people around us. Their hope showed through and other people came to Christ and were saved because of it. Now, it's important for us as Christians to not just say we believe, but to show that we believe with our actions, with the way we act should show what we believe. You know, I heard an analogy that said, you might say you believe a plane can fly, but you show your belief when you get on that plane and strap yourself in. And that's what believe in Christ is like. 
when we when we say it we need to go after it too and one of the things that that is really useful and helpful for us is a teaching from Paul in the book of Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 13 he says love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices in truth it always protects always trusts always hopes and always perseveres love never fails all right so the reason why I want to read that to you is because when we say we believe in love, in God, when we say we believe in Jesus, God is love. Everything about God is love. And this is it. And we want to become more like God. And we want our love for God and our commitment to God to show so other people can come to Christ too and become salvation too. So this verse in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, when it talks about love, that's who we want to become. When we say we believe in Jesus, we want to let this verse take over our lives. That's what it looks like to believe in Jesus. That's what's different. You know, if your mom annoys you, do you talk back to her or do you show her love and say, okay, mom, and you're respectful and kind to her? Are you patient? <laughs> if your brothers and sisters annoy you, are you patient with them? If somebody at school gets a toy that you wanted, are you envious of them? Or if you get the toy that they wanted, do you boast about it? You know, those are the things. That's what love looks like. That's what following Christ looks like. So when we believe in Christ, when we accept him as our savior and we run after him, we let this verse become our identity. We let this verse take over. It's okay to fail sometimes. We all fail sometimes. That's what Jesus is for. He's going to fill us with his hope. He's going to fill us with love so that this can transform who we are. And this is what following Jesus looks like and what believing in Jesus looks like. All right, that's it for today. Before you go, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're out there. If you want to pray and ask Jesus into your heart, tell me. Tell me in the comments. I want to pray with you too. All right, we're from... Um, New Day Christian Church in Eastville, California. It was great spending time with you today. Thank you so much. I hope to uh, spend time with you again soon. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.